Hey folks, this is Kalani. With Battle for Azeroth more or less over, and with no current plans for a patch 8.3.5 to help bridge the gap between now and the launch of the Shadowlands expansion, we can safely say it's about time to get comfortable with what we have. We're back into the content lull. Not much is going to happen for the rest of the year, depending on when Shadowlands actually comes out, with maybe the exception of the Shadowlands Alpha and Beta giving us something to be excited about. With the the alpha starting to ramp up somewhat with the new builds appearing over the last few weeks that might land on our doorstep very soon, but apart from that we're stuck with what we already have in 8.3, which is a bit of a shame really because right now I can see so much potential in the content in this patch, but it's just not been given the ability to really shine. The main culprit here has got to be the corruption system. There are so many different ways to make the corruption system so much better and you don't even have to turn the system on its head for a lot of these. Not only would the system be more enjoyable, but I think with a few tweaks it could also provide a lot more entertainment for a lot longer, which is perfect when we're heading into a content lull. That's exactly the kind of thing we need to stay at least semi-interested in the game as we wait for Shadowlands. So in the hopes of something maybe changing, let's have a chat about how the corruption system could be massively improved with a variety of minor adjustments. To talk about what could be improved, I guess we really need to pinpoint some of the major flaws first. Now the corruption effects themselves aren't always super interesting, all of them are passive, some of them just provide stat bonuses, so even though you getting a Twilight Devastation rank 3 doesn't really change much, it's still going to be really exciting because you know just how good that corruption effect actually is. So corruption changing your playstyle isn't where the excitement comes from at all, but getting some of the good items is still going to crack a smile in your face, it's still a good feeling. What's even better is setting up various sets of corruption gear due to the negative effects, giving you something of a limit on how much you can actually run with. Can you run 100 corruption in raids? Sure you can. Will you survive until the boss dies? Probably not, but there are some fights where you can run more and play a bit riskier, and having a lot of corrupted gear allows you to chop and change your setup to meet the requirements of different types of content. You'll want different corruptions for single target bosses, different corruptions for AoE bosses, for Mythic Plus, for PvP, you name it. I would say putting together different setups with different effects for different bosses and different scenarios is the best part of the corruption system. We're actually back to a place where we can play around with gear sets and make important choices about gear. The problem with that is that it's not coming from the gear at all. The gear only matters now if it has a corruption effect on it, and a good corruption effect at that. No one is trying to squeeze a lame corruption effect into their sets, so we need good corruptions, and we need lots of them so we can chop and change. Therein lies the second, larger problem. To start building sets, which might be the best part of the system, you have to actually get some corrupted gear in the first place. There's only two sources of guaranteed corruption gear. One is the Weekly Mythic Plus Cash, that will give you one corrupted item every single week, unless you get a trinket, and then the PvP Weekly Cash, which will give you a corrupted item every single week, unless you get a trinket or Azerite gear. So even though these are touted as guaranteed corruption sources, they actually aren't if you get unlucky. If you get a trinket from every single box you get, even if you get the good trinkets, you're still not getting any corrupted gear. No corrupted gear means no set making, so you're just missing out overall. Outside of those two sources of gear, you have the raid weapons, which are guaranteed to be corrupted, but only with certain corruption effects. If you want a Twilight Devastation, but you don't use two-handers, then the raid gear doesn't do anything for you at all. After that, you're relying entirely on random drops, and we all know how that usually turns out. Just in case you were curious, with every corruption effect and every rank included, there are 52 different effects your item can roll with, and that's assuming you get a corrupted item in the first place. From from all of the Mythic Plus I've seen in Season 4 so far, I've only got one corrupted item. That's with us running multiple dungeons per week at the very least, sometimes spamming them for an entire evening. The drop rate seems incredibly low for Mythic Plus at any rate. I've seen more items from raid clears, but not that many more. The most corrupted items I've seen are actually from BOEs dropping in the raid, and then from world quests and emissaries. Even if you have 10 or more corrupted items at this point, the chances of you having something to play around with and make different exciting sets with is actually still fairly low. 
So the first change that would require almost no change at all would be just buff the drop rate or the chance of receiving corrupted items. That would give you more corrupted items to play around with and to make sets with and it would give you a better chance of getting some of the good pieces. Blizzard hasn't been all that great at balancing well, anything really as of late, so I never thought the corruption system would be anything close to being balanced, but it is nice that some corruptions work really well for some classes and specs, but don't for others. Percent Mastery is a great example for fire mages, they love that corruption effect, but almost no one else does. But as I said, the fun only starts when you get enough gear to start swapping things around and making fun little sets, but if the drop rate is really low and the chances of getting something completely worthless are pretty high, it's going to take you a long time to get to the point where you can even start making some sets. With this kind of system and the lack of new content on the horizon, dangling the carrot on a stick for too long is bound to push people away instead of enticing them to run another dungeon. If the drop rate is increased to the point where you start seeing corrupted items every few dungeons you run or something similar, it's just a matter of time before you see another one. That's going to encourage more playtime no matter how you look at it. Just increasing the drop rate of corrupted items would go a long way to making this system more enjoyable. A lot of players have compared the recent loot trends in World of Warcraft to games like Diablo 3, where the grind is purposefully extended to try and keep you hunting after the better loot all the time. Titan Forging did the same thing. If there's always an upgrade available from a certain type of content, then people will run for that very small chance for the superior Titan Forge or the extra socket. But random loot only works so well in games like Diablo 3 because of the drop rates. Right now we're leaning more towards Diablo 3 gear, but we're nowhere near the Diablo 3 drop rates. You can't can't have one with the other, otherwise it always ends in frustration. But there are much better changes that could be made. I know I say this every single time I talk about Corrupted Gear, but I still can't believe that this system went live without a vendor. Time and time again when Blizzard has introduced a system that relies almost entirely on RNG, it's always been made better if a vendor is introduced. A pure RNG system requires bad luck protection, there's no way around that. The best kind of bad luck protection isn't something behind the scenes that will slowly increase the drop rate it's not something that tracks how long you've gone without loot or without specific items. The best kind of bad luck protection is a vendor. Something that allows you to grind, farm, collect and work towards a definite goal. Because then, even if you get super unlucky, you know that you can get what you want from a vendor if all else fails. This is why people want PvP vendors back. It doesn't matter if the gear is laid out on a roadmap for you every week. It doesn't matter that you have a chance to get gear from any BG or arena that you take part in. People just want to be able to get what they want. If they want their weapon first, that should be an option. If they want their trinket first, don't shove braces down their throat instead. This is another option that would kind of solve most of the complaints about corruption. If we could get what we wanted from a vendor, it wouldn't matter so much that the drop rate is low because we know we'll be able to get something eventually, as long as we're working towards whatever requirements are set in place. A vendor could work in a variety of ways too. They could implement a vendor that allows you to purchase a token that opens up into a random piece of gear that's guaranteed to be corrupted, so exactly like how the Weekly Mythic Plus cash works. This would play more into their gambling philosophy because you'd still end up with completely random results, you just get to open more boxes or tokens to test your luck more than once or twice a week. The real key here is increasing access to corrupted effects, but as I said there are a few options. A vendor could also facilitate you working towards a very specific corruption effect. You could either have a token that allows you to apply a corruption effect to any piece of gear you have, or maybe a token that gives you the choice of armor slot that you're creating with a specific corruption effect tied to it. So Twilight Devastation on gloves, or Infinite Stars on boots, that kind of thing. Allowing us to work towards a specific corruption effect might be a bit too one-sided though. Everyone would go straight for their best options, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it would highlight which corruption effects are actually worth using and which ones are a waste of time. That shines a very bright light on any poor balancing for the system, which the dev team might want to try and avoid. But I do think giving us the option to go for a specific effect would end up taking a lot longer to farm or grind out, but it could be the ultimate goal to work towards in this patch. 
Another cool way to really change up the system as a whole would be to have the corruption effects only drop at rank 1, and then we have to farm a certain item or purchase a token to actually upgrade those corruption effects to rank 2 and 3. That provides another sense of progression and it reduces the number of corruption effects in the overall pool. If someone has a rank 3 infinite stars, that's because they pumped their progress or corruption items into upgrading that rank. It gives it more meaning rather than, oh, I just got lucky. That means you only need to look out for an actual effect instead of a specific rank of an actual effect, so it's just all about choice. Keeping lower ranked effects is also quite beneficial sometimes to allow you to run multiple setups with different effects. Rank 3 isn't always going to be the best. Having a few rank 1s could be a better choice sometimes. If everything dropped at rank 1, you'd have the choice to upgrade them or not, so that puts more power in our hands. You could combine some of these ideas into a very different system too. Imagine if we were able to target and work towards one specific corruption effect. It could either be through quest lines, solo content, farming and grinding, maybe going off the beaten path in horrific visions or minor visions to collect the essence of the void. It could be whatever, right? Maybe farm special void star items to combine for the infinite star effect, or delve deep into areas of the void to collect the echoing void power. No matter what the actual source, it would provide you with another progression path to work on. You know you would need to do A, B, C to get your desired corruption effect, and then when you get it, a different currency or farm could allow you to upgrade it. The end result would be the same, we get to collect different corruption effects and put together various setups to take advantage of their strengths for different types of content, except we would have full control over how and when we obtain the items and effects. I guess that's maybe a bit too much power in the player's hands for right now, though there's not enough RNG. We have to have some RNG, otherwise there's no way the system would get implemented. Seriously though, I wonder what a gearing system without RNG would look like right now. We've been moving further and further away from reliable gearing for so long now. But I do think that's the major problem with this system. We just don't have any way to work towards anything relating to the corruption system on our own besides upgrading the legendary cloak to provide more resistance. That's the only part we have control over. How sad is that? Having no control and relying entirely on the slot machine gearing might seem like it would encourage and maintain playtime because the RNG just stretches out every gearing possibility. But if you stretch it too thin, it's going to snap people will leave the game frustrated instead of being encouraged to try again. When corrupted items are few and far between, getting a bad one can create a lot more strain than the dev team might realise, because you know it's going to be a long time before you see another corrupted item, so it's a long time before you get a chance to actually get something good. Any way to increase the rate at which we can obtain corrupted items, either by just upping the drop rate or by implementing a vendor in one of the many ways we talked about, would go a long way to not only making the corruption system more enjoyable, but to making the content lull between this expansion and the next more bearable. None of this matters going into the Shadowlands expansion anyway, they're going to do away with all of it again, so let us have some fun with it. The real fun with the system comes from having multiple pieces and being able to swap things around. The only way that's going to happen for the vast majority of players is to give them more corrupted gear. Personally, I would always prefer to have something to work towards, a tangible goal that depends on your time and effort, rather than a slot machine which is just the roll of the dice. A vendor makes the most sense to me, being able to say, okay, if I run three more dungeons, or kill four more raid bosses, or collect that special void item from Horrific Visions two more times, I can buy a token that guarantees a corrupted piece. That's so powerful as motivation. Way better than, oh, if I do, well... If I do anything, there's a chance, a small chance, but still a chance, that I could get something. I think the majority of us are just tired of RNG at this point, and would be way happier having reliable rewards to work towards. Corruption effects could still be incredibly fun, but without any changes, we're just waiting until the dice rolls in our favour. But that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Hopefully the Shadowlands Alpha will go up pretty soon, so we can start giving feedback on the various new systems that will be popping up in the new expansion. 
And I'll be keeping my fingers crossed that a lot of the RNG is getting left behind, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. What do you think of corruption effects right now, and how do you think the system could be improved as a whole? Would a higher drop rate be enough, or should the dev team look into a vendor that provides a new way to acquire corrupted effects? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, you can see the names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave and if you want to see more make sure to subscribe but apart from that thanks for watching folks good luck and have fun and as always i'll see you next time